This fake legendary fella has always been super popular and it performs really well competitively. With well-rounded stats, it's most often used as kind of a bulky support, especially with that intimidate ability. But it can also function as a full offensive threat, hear me out. It's got access to stab flare blitz to hit super hard along with coverage in things like close combat and its secret weapon, extreme speed. However, the true secret sauce comes with the move curse for setup. With this, we can boost attack along with defense to become even more bulky at the price of dropping our speed by one stage. It turns out speed is no issue when your speed is extreme. Paired with Terra Normal to boost this even further, this Arcanine is able to catch people extremely off guard and is very fun to use. All right, look, today is all about the best boy, and Curse Extreme Speed is something that no one's really taking advantage of right now, and I feel like it can be pretty good. It's always just kind of fun to find a unique way to use an already good Pokemon. If you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and you could be part of the madness. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent does have this buff fairy bastard, and of course they're gonna lead off with the Grim Snarl. I imagine, as a lead, this thing's kinda here to set up screens, parting shot, and just be annoying with his snatched waist over there. Now, I lead off with the Frostlass because I'm here to sprinkle some spikes around. Frostlass lead has been really fun lately, and honestly, I always seem to get some pretty good value out of this as a lead. So, of course, they are gonna take the first opportunity to set up the light screen. This is likely gonna be the light clay, so it's gonna stick around forever. And as I set up my first layer of spikes, I kind of just imagine that this thing is gonna continue. He's gonna go for that reflect. Gonna go for the old-fashioned Aurora Veil and take up the two turns. So, there's the reflect. And uh, honestly, for us, Lice is totally fine with this. I'm able to get up my two layers of spikes. And while they do likely have hazard control with the Great Tusk and Rapid Spin, they can't Rapid Spin against the Frostlass. It's honestly, it's one of the better Pokemon that's able to both set up the spikes and also block spins being ghost type. So I'm fine with that. I just decide, you know, I could go for the Ice Beam expecting maybe they go into Tusk, but there's no way. Uh, I just figure I'm just going to go for another layer of spikes. This is fine. But I do, in fact, get taunted, which is like, hey, I already got up my two layers. I will definitely go ahead and take that. So I do want to try to conserve my Focus Ash on the Frostlass. I can try to get some cheeky, you know, potential for Destiny Bonds later, and also good to save that in the back for a Spin Blocker later on if Tusk does want to come in. So I decide to go into the Florges. Big old Bulbous Head comes in, and the Grim Snarl is going to say, hey, actually, I'm going to head out. They do go for the Parting Shot, so dropping my Special Attack is a little bit annoying, as now they get a switch into whatever they like, and it turns out... The second annoying guy of the game is going to come in. Amoongus is a very interesting matchup here, right? Because while I know I can take a Sludge Bomb relatively nicely being a Salt Vest, I also run the risk of being put to sleep with Spore, but also I don't have anything to touch it, and I find myself in a spot where it's like if they go for the Sludge Bomb immediately and uh, they don't Spore, a Shaman switch in here is kind of uh, not ideal. But I don't have a whole lot else to do, so I decide if I'm them, I probably still just click the Spore. Bringing in this thing on the threat of a Sludge Bomb is so kind of a risky move, but they do go for the Spore, and uh, Hell Salad with his little Hedgehog ass is not going to be put to sleep today. So, at this point, I do have the coverage. Air Slash kind of seems like my best bet here for the flinch chance, and with the choice specs, I'm able to do a round half to the fella, but not quite going to be enough, as uh, they do fire off the Sludge Bomb, and uh, while I am able to live, it too is definitely going to kill. So I find myself in a position here where it's kind of just more worth it for me to get some more chip on the Amoongus. While this thing is a regenerating fella, I can just at least try to run a flinch chance here. But it doesn't quite happen, and down goes the Shaman, which uh, is kind of a fine trade-off, getting that amount of damage off on the Amoongus, just because I feel like you know, Shaman wasn't really great in this matchup anyway. And uh, the Hedgehog will have his day soon, don't you worry. So... At this point, now I can get a switch into whatever I like, and I decide to go right back into Frostlass, because of course I do threaten this with the Ice Beam, and they do not have a whole lot that wants to come in uh, on the Frostlass. So they're going to end up switching Amoongus, as I do kind of expect that thing does get the Regenerator, can come back a little bit more healthy later, uh, and at this point they are actually just going to go right into the Volcarona. So we do not see this thing take the damage from the Spikes. Tells me this thing is wearing boots, but does not even have feet, but he must have one little boot at the little tip of his thing over there. So, it comes out on the Ice Beam nicely, and at this point, this is actually kind of bad, because while I'm not do knocked down to my Focus Ash yet, I also cannot go for a Destiny Bond, and I know, if I know a Volcarona, this thing is going to start dancing. He's going to give us the free show in the Quiver Dance Volcarona, 
is honestly one of the scarier threats in the game right now, especially with access to being able to tear it into whatever it, it wants. So I decided to go into Arcanine here. Main reason is because even with this thing Quiver Dancing, uh, I max HP in attack, so I'm relatively bulky as the Intimidate doesn't help us out, of course. Uh, I know that I resist this thing's dual stab. It's likely just gonna have, you know, a Fiery Dance and a Bug Buzz, and uh, Arcanine's totally fine with that. And they decide they're gonna take this opportunity. They're already this far. They're gonna like, yeah, I'm gonna go for another Quiver Dance. That's fine, gonna go set, set up plus two, and that makes this thing extremely scary. But, I will tell you this, they did not expect Arcanine to be able to hit them with anything really, and that's where the curse comes in, and now I get myself a nice little plus one to attack and defense, and we are looking like I'm actually just in range to where a Terra normal boosted extreme speed at plus one should likely kill the Volcarona. So you already know I'm going to go for it, and uh, Arcanine is basically in its full form out here. Oh, you thought Dragonite was the only guy that could take advantage of Terra Normal boosted extreme speeds? No, you are absolutely incorrect, and honestly, I feel like you get better value out of a curse set, because I'm even way more bulky now with my plus one to defense, and as long as I'm not dealt with on the special side, we're in a pretty good spot here. So, I do go for that extreme speed, it is going to be enough to take care of the Volcarona, so that neutralizes likely the biggest threat on either side of the field. The thing with Quiver, two Quiver Dances is uh, pretty insane. And I just knew that going for that Terra, while that does get rid of my resistances, it definitely was going to kill there. So that is amazing, and now Arcanine is uh, ready to go. We got the bling on our head, and we were just out here balling. So they decided to go back into the Grimmsnarl, and this thing's just going to go for that Prankster parting shot. Wants to drop that uh, attack back down to neutral, but uh, honestly, I know that that thing likely doesn't really have much attacking moves that could hit me, so I'm just going to go for another curse, which is like... I'm kind of doing exactly what I need to here. While I did get that attack drop, I keep the defense, and now I'm sitting at plus two defense and plus one attack after the parting shot. So, they decide to bring in the Quagsire, looking like a toddler who says, Mom, I threw up, but also, this thing has the potential to be unaware. Uh, but what leads me to believe it's most likely going to be Water Absorb is not only the team synergy it kind of has with his team, but also the fact that uh, they parting shot there. So it's like, dude, dude, this thing is worried about my stats, and uh, I'm just gonna go for an extreme speed. While it doesn't do a whole bunch of damage, I do figure that, especially at plus two defense, an earthquake is kind of the worst this could do, or potentially something like a surf. This thing, losing access to Scald, kind of just makes me want to stay in here, which is perfect. And also, as they go for the yawn, I am gonna fall asleep next turn, but I'm like, you know what, that's really not that bad. Because looking at the remainder of their team, with my defense, I'm actually, Still sitting kind of pretty here. So I go for another extreme speed as they take this opportunity to go ahead and set up the stealth rock. They probably expect me to switch out there, being you know the threat of being put to sleep. But honestly, Arcanine's a snoozy boy anyway. Nothing wrong with a little, little, little mid-game nap time. And uh, I'm just going to fall asleep here, which is mostly fine. Again, I have the defenses. I know I have the bulk uh, to be able to kind of outlast whatever they want to do here. So they decide to switch out the Quagsire. It tells me that thing does not have much business uh, hitting me offensively, and they're going to end up going into the Great Tusk here. So as Tusk comes in, gets hurt by some spikes, which is nice, but also is going to activate the Protosynthesis. And this is what tells me this is going to be a full-on defensive Tusk because it does get the defense boost, which is not actually super ideal for Arcanine here, as I'm only setting up plus one. And while this thing does have the option for kind of more of a, a stab, like close combat potential, uh, a lot of the time a defensive Tusk might not be running that type of coverage. I do actually end up waking up super early. Guy says, oh, you thought nap time was still going? No, no, we're zooming fast out here. As an extreme speed doesn't quite do enough to two-hit KO, and it turns out they go for the Ice Spinner. So likely just expecting the switch, but dude does not know how to handle the Arcanine, and that does literally nothing. Plus, I have some leftovers. So now we've had a nap, we've had some leftovers, and honestly, we're, we're feeling pretty good over here. So, at this point, here's the plan. It looks like a Flare Blitz actually has a pretty solid chance to kill here, and they realize that they should probably just go for their best stab option, which is Earthquake. Does nothing to me at max HP and plus two defense, which is hilarious. Now, the Flare Blitz barely, he hangs on by a thread, which is kind of annoying, but also, at this point, I'm still looking good enough. It turns out they do not have the fighting coverage, which we are worried about, but now we're feeling pretty damn good. You cannot break these diamonds. Now I can just outspeed with that extreme speed, and uh, that is going to take care of the defensive Great Tusk with the Protosynthesis boost to defense. So Arcanine absolutely going on a tear over here, and still honestly looking pretty solid in terms of, uh, in terms of health. So I don't really know what their answer is going to be. Now, they do still have the Grim Snarl, who can set up screens, or it can choose to parting shot, whatever it wants to do. But as they do decide to go into the Grim Snarl, as it turns out, Prankster does not go before 
extreme speed. This speed over here is extreme. I'm able to go for it before they can either parting shot or reflect, and that is going to take care of the Grimmsnarl. Just straight up knocks him out. And at this point, this Arcanine has no, no natural predators. Now, they do still have a King Gambit in the back. That uh, it actually cannot threaten me with the uh, sucker punch because I could just you know, kind of read that and go for extreme speed. Turns out they are going to go into the King Gambit here, and we're going to see what this little fellow wants to get going. Now, again, with my defense, I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me, even with the Supreme Overlord, as uh, only three have fainted at this point. So that's actually pretty solid. Now, going for the close combat seems like the optimal play to guarantee a kill, but also I do know that they have uh, the Terra in the back. And honestly, a lot of the time I've been bamboozled by Terra Ghost King Gambits time and time again. So I'm actually just going to go for the Flare Blitz. I don't care about the recoil. And it turned, they are going to go for the Terra Flying. So that would resist the close combat as well. So luckily, I, uh, as I am slower, of course, because of Curse, they take this opportunity to go for the Sword Stance. They figure, you know, kind of setting this thing up is basically their last win condition here. I go for the Flare Blitz, not quite going to be able to knock it out. And as I do take some recoil, it turns out this thing is going to go ahead and activate an item, and it's freaking red card. Buddy has had the red card in the back, and uh, probably just didn't want to have to commit the Terra, but it turns out it is what he had to do, and uh, the Terra is going to allow it to live and activate the red card. So that is kind of scary, but also, at this point, I uh, am worried about a Sucker Punch, but I'm just going to go for a Destiny Bond. Now, I, I do not have my Focus Ash intact, which would have been super optimal at this point, but it turns out they're just going to go for Kowtow Cleave, and uh, is going to be able to take care of the Frost Last, but in turn, Una reversed that ass, and the Destiny Bond is also going to take care of the King Gambit. So that thing is extremely scary with the Swords Dance, but at this point, you know, they've committed the Terra, and it was honestly pretty clutch being able to live that Flare Blitz, but it is what it is, and at this point, their final two Pokemon are going to be the Quagsire, and I think the, the freaking Mushroom. So I figure Staraptor actually has a pretty good switch in here. I've got enough chip on the Quagsire to where... Uh, a Brave Bird should be able to do it. And also, Amoongus, even after regenerating his weird little mushroom, he is going to still be, especially after Spikes, indefinitely in range for a Brave Bird. So, uh, freaking Emo Bird can come in here and just kind of uh, do his best janitor impression and just kind of sweep up the rest of the team here as Arcanine kind of did the, the main brunt of the work for us. So, that takes care of Amoongus. The final Mon is going to just be this Quagsire, who has no chance, especially after the Spikes. He hurts his poor little feet, and that's going to finish off the match for us. So, that was honestly super satisfying to get Arcanine to do exactly what we needed to do, especially on heavy physical offensive teams. That thing is impossible to kill once it gets some curses up. So, that's going to be the end of Game 1. Very fun. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and jump into the next one. Alright, so look, I'm going to tell you straight up, this is a super good game. I had a lot of fun with this one. And we're going up against a very scary team with a lot of uh, offensive threats. They also have, like, the Sticky Web with Galvantula. And I am afraid. But, it's fine. Let's get into it. Alright, so Homeboy in the fresh-ass cowboy hat in the fade is going to lead off with the Galvantula. So, listen, this team does have the Magic Bounce support with the Espeon. And... I imagine they probably know that, so they're not going to want to click the Sticky Web. So I decided to lead off with the Star Raptor, mainly just because I expect the Gavantula lead. I want a U-turn to be able to break its for sure Focus Sash. And at this point, I can just go into Espeon. Now, if they want to make the hard read and go for the Bug Buzz, I'm willing to, <laughs> I'm willing to allow that. But they're just going to go for the Thunder Wave, which is actually a pretty solid middle ground play, because as I do bounce it back... This thing cannot be paralyzed. So I get Espeon in, you know, for free here, but also now I'm kind of running the risk of being hit with a bug buzz again, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. So I decide it's actually a pretty solid play just to go right back into Star Raptor, who then can resist the bug buzz, again, outspeed with the scarf, and we've already knocked out the, uh, the Focus Sash, so this thing is going to essentially go down. So I can just go for the Brave Bird here, and yeah, they do have potential switches into this, but honestly, Star Raptor Brave Bird's... They hurt. They, they hurt real bad. Now, they are going to save the Galvantula for later as uh, they go into the freaking easy bake oven ass. And a lot of the time, Rotom is going to be more kind of defensive here with like a Will O Wisp and Volt Switch. And as I'm almost able to get the amount of damage I need, I could potentially go for the Terra Flying and still knock it out. But I want to conserve the Terra here. And uh, I don't want to kind of waste, I don't want, I don't want to burn the Star Raptor too easy because you do take a lot uh, from the recoil. So I just decided to go into the floor just this thing can take uh, ideal for a Will-O-Wisp, but also can just sponge any special attack. As uh, they do make the nice play and go for the pivot with the Volt Switch. And that brings in this clanging asshole. Como-O is 
extremely scary. So here's the thing, even though obviously I threatened this with a moon blast, I know that they're for sure gonna go for some type of Terra here. And also, I know Coma O's like the back of my hand. This thing is gonna go for the Clangorous Soul, and with those boosts, it can easily sweep the team. But here's the thing, I decide I'm gonna switch into Espeon here. Now, you'll see why here in a moment, but uh, they do of course commit the Terra. If you bring in Coma O against a Fairy type, of course, you're gonna go for that normal Terra. Uh, oftentimes these do run normal just because that's able to boost uh, Boom Burst, and uh, this thing is about to show us why this is one of the scariest mons right now. It goes for the Clangorous Soul, and that is going to effectively give it a plus one to every single stat. Sounds broken, it does take a little bit of chip damage from doing that, but uh, uh, not only that does it get a plus one to literally every stat, but also that for whatever reason is also gonna activate its freaking Throat Spray. So. Espeon's like, hey, that was actually look nice. Let me go ahead and copy that. I have the Mirror Herb, which is able to not only cap copy the stat boost from the Clangor Soul, but also it turns out I had no clue how this interaction really was going to work out. I actually also get the plus two to the special attack from the Throat Spray. So now Espeon is exactly matching the stat boost from this thing, and I have myself a position to make shit happen because since Espeon's naturally faster, both of us being at plus one, I'm going to be faster. And I have a big decision to make. Now, it turns out I'm going to go ahead and commit the Terra Fairy. While, you know, it's most common that this thing is going to go for something just like that Boom Burst now that it's especially stabbed, I figure I, it's worth it for me to go for the Terra Fairy just on the option that this thing wants to go for the Dragon Move in the Clanging Scales instead. It would be extremely satisfying. I'm able to outspeed. The reason why I need to go for the Terra, or at least wanted to, is because I know Psyshock barely isn't able to kill. Now, it turns out... They do, in fact, just go for the Boom Burst, and uh, that is... Uh, listen, I had to go for that Terra. It would have been so satisfying if I was able to just sweep their team with the Espeon with their own stat boost to everything. So, while I do go down there, I also lose my Terra, and it's not quite the end of the world, because honestly, I would have been nearly swept by this freaking Coma O anyway if it wasn't for Espeon, but I was also able to get such a good amount of chip that uh, now I can actually just go right into Arcanine and uh, do my extreme speed shenanigans. So... They do not know the power that lies within this Arcanine quite yet, as uh, they know the extreme speed's likely coming, because a lot of people, you know, Arcanine is often running the extreme speed, so they are going to switch out, but honestly that completely neutralizes the coma as it's not able to go for a Clangorous Soul again. So, as they decide to go into the Rotom, this thing does come in, and it's a 2 KO with the extreme speed, which is actually perfect, as this thing actually still seems like it's a defensive Rotom, but... As I'm looking at this matchup, you know, this thing cannot Will-O-Wisp me. It, it, it really can't do much. So I decide this is actually a perfect opportunity to just go right for the curse. So they are able to Volt Switch, which is going to give them a nice little bit of chip. But that is fine, because now they decide to go into Galvantula. Now, Galvantula is free to you know, do whatever it wants with its webs, because Espeon is now dead. But the K9 is out here yelling profanities. I'm able to go for the curse, get myself to plus one attack and defense. And even after some leftover recovery, I'm still looking pretty healthy. Now, the also important factor is that at plus one, even without Terra Normal, which I've burnt my Terra at this point, which is unfortunate, I know that uh, with the chip I have on the Galvantula, extreme speed should be able to do it. I do end up getting the critical hit. I don't think it mattered uh, for the Galvantula, which is fine. And now Arcanine, after more leftovers recovery, we are out here healthy. So they do still have some pretty big threats on their end that can hit me on the physical side and they are gonna decide to go into one of them fellas right now. So the Crocodile comes in and while we notice it's not gonna be Intimidate, which is good for us, it does tell us it's gonna be like a Moxie set and it's probably some type of scale shot scary stuff. So I decided to just go for the close combat knowing that without any boost and Earthquake, I actually believe I can live with max HP and a plus one defense. So as they're able to go for the bulk up, it does allow him to just barely hang on to the close combat. And uh, I do sadly have to drop my defenses for that, but it brings my physical back down to neutral. But you already know we are the speed of damn light out here. That's why we're yellow. We're freaking lightning dog. I can go for an extreme speed, and that is going to take care of the crocodile. Honestly, a pretty big sleeper threat out of the way. But they do still have some pretty big threats left. Mainly going to be things like the Excadrill. They have the Rillaboom. The Rotom is still hanging on. But honestly, we, we'd be hanging on even better. I don't know how many more bites are left in this leftover apple, but we're feeling pretty healthy at this point. So, they decide to go into Rillaboom here because they're kind of running low on options, especially knowing that even an Excadrill Earthquake would not be enough to knock me out at full health here. They go into the Rillaboom. Now, this thing 
does activate the grassy terrain paired with that grassy seed does give it a plus one to defense but then as i'm feeling i'm like you know what this thing actually it actually doesn't really have much coverage to hit me so they go for the acrobatics which is boosted by the fact that they used up their item but we are extremely thick out here in a break <laughs> or a flare blitz is going to be able to just straight up knock that thing out so really boom with the plus one defense it does fall to the Arcanine there, and I take some recoil, which is unfortunate. But we also now get healed by the grass and the leftovers, so like this thing is just out here getting bandages put all over the place. So, I believe they actually, so they have three Mons left. Sorry, they have the Rotom who cannot come in because it dies to an extreme speed. Koma O is also an extreme speed range, but who is not is this little baby ass mole over here. I don't know why. This thing is 9 inches tall, but in comes the Excadrill, and while I do know I do finally go down to an attack from this thing, I decide to just get some last little chip with the extreme speed, and sadly, the Earthquake is going to take care of the Arcanine, which is honestly fine because we did what we needed to do in whittling down the entire team, and you already know who is about to come in and clean shit up for us. That is our main boy, the uh, the Staraptor. This thing is such a, late, a great late game uh, kind of revenge killer as I can come in I have coverage on kind of whatever they have left especially knowing that uh, their two final mons being Koma O and the Rotom have like nothing left I can go for the close combat here choice scarf allows me to outspeed and uh, that is going to take care of the uh, the Excadrill there so down goes Mr. Mole and the good news about using close combat is that I don't have to take the recoil damage you know, from like the Brave Bird or Double Edge which is fantastic so uh, now they just go into the Rotom, they know the close combat fate that's about to uh, about to ensue, so they're actually just going to go ahead and just run. So that is going to be the end of that one. Arcanine did once again put in the finest of work, and it was extremely satisfying, but here's the thing, I do have one more match for you, here's a little, here's a little bonus. So look, I don't normally make this kind of long of videos, but if you're still here and you enjoy, go ahead and comment RK9 in the bottom for me, so I know the real ones who have stuck around. But... Looking at this dude's team, this absolutely screams Trick Room. They have the Porygon 2 to set it up, they've got Cresselia to set it up, there's everything here benefits from Trick Room, and I already know what I'm going to try to do. <laughs> so, while I don't really know what their kind of lead wants to be, I'm just going to stick with all Reliable. It turns out they're going to go with the Porygon 2, and Smooth Duck is here, I'm imagining to uh, probably paralyze some stuff, and then also potentially trick room I don't know when you see it doesn't have any coverage really unless it got shadow ball which it could be likely but I'm gonna take this opportunity just to lay down some spikes now the spikes are gonna be great to just get that extra added chip for the sweepers in the back and I really feel like curse Arcanine can try to take advantage of the speed tiers here as they do go for the trick room that's gonna reverse all of the uh, all the speed tiers and now this thing is absolutely zooming while the duck is fast the frost Lass is going to be moving slow here now as they stay in and go for the thunderbolt frostitude actually tells them hey cut that out i get the cursed body and it allows me to go for another layer of spikes which is honestly perfect but uh, as they realize they're probably they're burning turns of the trick room there's not really much sense in them kind of sticking around here and going for uh, you know, just another Thunderbolt here. So they decide to switch as um, I'm just going to go for a third layer of spikes. Main reason is because I like to see the world burn. And I also like to see people's feet hurt. As this thing comes in, it does touch the two layers, takes a little bit of chip. And uh, the Ursa Luna is a very large threat. Mainly because as they hard switch this thing in, it's actually also now going to be able to get its Flame Orb. Which is going to now activate its Guts ability. And uh, at this point, I swear to God, if someone comments, why would they go Flame Orb for Guts? It ignores the attack drop when you have Guts. That's the most popular comment anytime there's ever a Guts thing. But they actually make this thing even more scary because they go for the Sword Stance here. And I do just have the answer in Ice Beam. Uh, I figured it might have a chance to kill there. Doesn't quite do it for me. But now this bear has now snorted a line of cocaine off of the sword. And this thing is extremely scary. They do have a turn of Trick Room left. Headlong Rush is going to be absolute overkill. And down goes the Frost Lass. So, again, the good news is they did waste that one turn, turn at least with the Porygon going for the Thunderbolt. It did knock out my Focus Sash, though, so honestly, a pretty good play. Um, but the Burn is looking like it's actually quite... It's not quite going to be able to knock it out in one more turn. But the Dimensions do return to normal, and I would love to get this Arcanine in because I really want to try to take advantage of their Trick Room. And I know they want to set it back up because they do have... Some very you know, slow, threatening boys in the back. So I come in, get the Intimidate, and uh, we also don't really care what the speed situation is because I have the Extreme Speed able to go for that priority. Finish off the uh, Ursa King, and that thing is quite scary, and it's good to see that thing out of the way. So now they just decide to go right back into the Porygon 2, which is kind of what I figured at this point. 
and uh, it is gonna download some special attack. So while it can hit me a little bit hard, I decide, you know what, this is a perfect opportunity just to go for a curse. So I am actually gonna be faster here, able to go for that curse, drop my speed, and just boost up the old attack and defense. You know the drill at this point, Curse Arcanine is absolutely the truth, and I will not hear anything. Otherwise, they do now go for that trick room, and that is going to make things all crazy. Because of the fact that I went for the curse, I actually dropped my speed, and uh, I'm feeling like, you know what, just to ensure that I'm gonna be faster than everything, I have no speed investment in this thing at all. So I'm gonna go for a second curse. And as they go into Iron Hands here, this chubby fella is known for being a pretty slow guy. Imagine lugging around those palms, for real. But I go for a second curse, and at minus two, that's effectively halving my speed. And now I'm also at plus two attack. So the Trick Room is still active. And I'm feeling like, hey, Arcanine is actually faster here. I can now go for the Flare Blitz at plus two. And that is how you take advantage of opposing Trick Room as that takes care of the Iron Hands. They're probably like, wow, a curse? Arcanine has, has absolutely hoed this dude. So yeah, I love to see it. It's honestly not the way that this is supposed to be designed to be used. Sometimes you don't even need to click extreme speed to bypass your slow speed. Uh, oftentimes you just can just use the crazy trick room. So now they decide to go right back into Porygon 2. It would be kind of hilarious if they decided to uh, go for a trick room again, which effectively turns it off. But uh, I know that at plus two, I actually even just have the coverage here with the close combat, beat the absolute hell out of the peeled duck, and uh, down goes the Porygon 2. So while this guy has likely realized his plan has been pretty much soiled at this point, I do take... Uh, the defensive drop there with the close combat, which is fine because there is still one more turn of Trick Room. So Arcanine's gonna be able to go before literally whatever they decide to send in. And uh, not only they're gonna have a threat, they're gonna have one of the freaking scariest things, which is this crazy circle head guy on a freaking ice horse. In comes the Calyrex Ice Rider, and this thing is one of the scarier Trick Room fellas, but it turns out I'm actually just still faster under Trick Room. <laughs> And a Flare Blitz is able to just one-hit the fella. So down goes the Calyrex. That guy is not going to be it could be riding the damn horse in hell because it is effectively frozen over. But I, I take some recoil. And yeah, we, we've burnt through their Trick Room threats at this point. And Curse Arcanine has done it, pretty much the funniest, funniest thing imaginable. The, the dimensions do return to normal. But uh, as they realize, hey, this, is, this has been a bad idea. They go into the crest. And they're actually just going to go ahead and bail because... Uh, <laughs> Trick Room is often hard enough to pull off by itself, but then when something like this happens, you hate to see it. I'm actually just going to go for the Terra Normal Extreme Speed just to flex, but they are going to run. So that's going to be the end of the game. Thank you guys very much for watching. Arcanine is a monster.